Subscribe to Witchtube for latest tech related videos. This is Samsung's latest Galaxy Watch 4 that runs on Google's Wear OS 3 and since it runs on Google Wear OS there are more options on developer mode than what we had on the Galaxy Watch 3. I've done a video for all the developer mode options on Tizen OS smartwatches and the video is linked at the end. Also on previous Galaxy smartwatches when you tap 5 times on the serial number you will get this keyboard. And I have done a detailed video about all the codes that you can enter to check out your Tizen OS smartwatch under the hood. Especially the so-called diagnostic mode where you can check all the components of the Tizen OS smartwatch if they are working properly or not. From my trials, I did not find this option on the latest Galaxy Watch 4. Comment down below if you know about it. But for Tizen OS smartwatches, just check out that video linked at the end for all the diagnostic options. With all that said, to enter the developer mode, just go in the settings, scroll all the way down to the about watch, find software and tap 7 times on the software version to enter the developer mode. Now to exit the developer mode, you just have to tap 7 times again on the software version. Once the developer mode is turned on, you'll find the developer mode option above the about watch section under the settings. Now if you are not a developer, you should refrain from messing around in the developer mode. But for common people like you and me, trust me, you'll find a lot of helpful option that can actually boost up the performance of your Galaxy Watch 4. So keep watching and try it out. Also comment down below your favorite one. Here you'll find all these options. Let me briefly talk about each of these options. The first one is stay awake while charging. This option is pretty self-explanatory, but I like to keep it on as I can use my watch as a time clock while it's charging. But turn it off if you want your watch to charge faster as with the display being turned on, it may take a bit longer to charge. Next is Bluetooth snoop logging. This is more for developers but basically if it is turned on it will create a log file of all the Bluetooth traffic from this device for analysis purpose. Next is vibrate on connectivity change. I really like this option. I always keep it turned on as the watch will notify me by vibrating if it gets disconnected. Next is ADB debugging. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge. It basically is a command line tool built in Android's SDK. It lets you communicate with your smartwatch and perform various actions such as installing and debugging applications, copying files back and forth and accessing Unix shell to run commands. This is strictly for developers. So if you are not a developer, don't even bother using this. On Galaxy Watch 4, you can debug over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. On Android smartphone, there will be an option to debug over USB. Next option is to revoke all debugging authorization. Use this in case if you have given your smartwatch for any sort of debugging to your friend or someone so that once you revoke it, they will no longer be able to communicate or connect with your watch. Next is where developer options where you can enable or disable force low bit ambient mode which I think will limit the available colors to black, white, blue, red, magenta, green, cyan and yellow. Again I'm not 100% certain about the functional implication of this mode. Next option is select mock location app. This basically will allow developer to set a mock location for testing watch and app in different location. Next is logger buffer size where a developer can customize the buffer size from 64 kilobyte to 1 megabyte. Next is debug layout. This is a really cool feature. When you turn it on, you will see these guidelines around all the clickable elements. I guess this will be a helpful tool for developers, but you can literally scare someone out if you leave this on and exit the settings and all the clickable elements will have all these guidelines. Well, I don't recommend you doing this and just go back in the developer mode and turn off the debug layout to revert the watch back to the normal layout. Next is Force RTL layout which stands for right to left hand layout. This is another cool trick that you can do with your Galaxy Watch 4. When you exit the developer mode, you will find the watch oriented towards the right side versus the default left side. Now if you are a right handed person, you may actually find this really helpful. Now I'm curious to know how many of you will actually use this RTL layout on daily basis. 
comment down below if you are one of them. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, I thank you so much for sticking around. There's a lot more fun settings coming right up. I just want you to take a second to hit that like button so it can help this video to reach out to a lot of amazing people like you. And also consider subscribing so you don't miss out any upcoming videos. Next is Debug Overdraw. Turning it on will turn on all the clickable elements to have a green highlight on them. Boy, go ahead and turn on the debug layout and exit the developer mode and the watch will now look quite scary with all these lines and green highlights. This feature is cool for you and me, but for developers, I guess this is a helpful tool to design applications where they can distinctly see all the clickable elements. Now, before you go back in the developer mode to turn off the debug layout and the overdraw, there is one more setting which will further make your watch look scarier. And that is the debug GPU profiling, which will basically show a real time graph of the watch's GPU processing. If you do any intensive task, the graph will change. Again, I'm not a developer, but I find turning on debug layout, debug all draw and GPU profiling all together. It just makes the element of the watch hard to discern, but all this can really be helpful tool for developers. Now, let me just go ahead and turn off all of them. The next three options are my favorite. Any Vero smartwatch that I use, I just turn off all these animation scales like Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale and Animator Duration Scale. By default, it will be set to 1x Animation Scale with which you can see all the animation of Windows and Transition. Now the longer the duration is, the slower the animation will be. So if you go like 5x or 10x, windows and transition animation scale, you will perceive that your watch is super slow. It'll be like everything is just in a slow motion. But if you just turn off all the animation scale, you will instantly notice that your watch is now super fast with zero latency. I always personally turn off all the animation scale and I'm super addicted to it as my watch just looks and feels really, really fast. Try this out and you will be amazed. Also turning off all these animation scales will save a bit of a battery life as the watch's GPU does not have to work so hard to process all these animations. Next is pointer location. This is another unique tool that draws a guideline to any part of the display that you touch. At the very top, it also depicts the X and the Y axis coordinates. Some of these features like debug overdraw, debug layout, this pointer location and the next option that is the show tab can be used as a diagnostic tool to check if various part of the display is functioning properly. If you find some clickable elements or some part of the display are acting funny, you can literally diagnose it from these tools. Now the show tap tool will show all the taps on the display. This tool can actually be helpful while the developer screen records the display for tutorials as during a screen recording with this option turned on, all the taps will be displayed precisely. Next is debug report in menu. Turning this on will add a new app icon in the menu which looks like this. When you click on it, the watch will start generating a bug report. It may take few minutes to create a bug report after which you will be notified when the report is generated which will then be sent over to your phone. The report contains sensitive data which you don't want to share it around. Again, if you are not a developer, this may not be of any use. Let's go back into the developer options. Next option is turn on Wi-Fi automatically while charging. Now I personally tend to keep it turned on because while I keep the watch in charging, most of the apps from the Play Store will get updated over Wi-Fi while the watch is being charged. 
I have turned on auto update apps from the Play Store settings and with this turn on Wi-Fi while charging option all the apps will automatically get updated without draining the battery life while it's charging. Going back into the developer mode. Next is Wi-Fi verbose logging which I guess is just like Bluetooth snoop logging to keep track of the Wi-Fi connections or so. Next is turn off automatic Wi-Fi which will turn off the auto Wi-Fi option. Mobile battery saver is another option as the name implies for minimizing battery drainage on your phone. I would prefer this option to be turned on. Next is battery optimization where you'll find all the services that will be available when your phone is paired with the watch. I honestly don't know what is this 3G PPAT commands. From my research these commands are defined as part of 3G PP standard that implies all the wireless module that operates on a cellular network are required to support the AT commands. Now the second last option is app notifications where you can choose to show all or you can check the apps that have disabled notifications. Again the watch must be paired to a phone for this. Last is Samsung Verbos debug logging. Again like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi logging, this is some form of logging debug data. That is about it with all these developer options. I really hope you found some useful developer settings. Be sure to try them out and comment down below and consider subscribing. Also hit that like button and check out all these videos as you will find them enticing.